Hey guys, it's Point Shooter here. Today's video is all about button compasses. What to look for and what to avoid. I have a sampling here, and I forgot to put this one in the picture. I have a sampling here of compasses that I've had since I was a kid, and ones that I've just gotten in the last few weeks. Um, right off the bat, we're going to start with my Cog uh, Coleman's Engineer Compass. We have north facing in this direction, and I'm going to leave this one out as reference. These are all the different compasses that I have and use. Uh, the only one that's missing was a watch band compass that was made by Silva. It was called their 40 model, their SEER compass. And I had one of these when I was a kid, and darn if I didn't lose it at a soccer game. I went to go, uh, go in to play, and I took my watch off and had it slipped over the band and handed it to the coach, and he put it in his pocket, and somehow in the, the course of the day, it fell off, and when I got my watch back at the next practice, uh, the compass was gone, and I've never been able to find one to replace it. Tragedy of my childhood. I spent days looking through those fields looking for it, I'll tell you. I was devastated. But all that aside, I have watch band compasses. I have small button compasses. I have keychain compasses. I have other watch band compasses. All kinds of compasses. And the question is, when you're buying a button compass, what should you look for? There is not a single button compass that I've ever had, except for one, which I'll show here on the bottom of my uh, angle torch. All button compasses I've ever had have eventually failed. And I'll show you a couple examples. Here's one more I'm looking for here. Here they are. This is a good example. See all the bubbles in it? It no longer points north. See there's bubbles under this one too. It no longer points north. Bubbles under this one, it no longer points north. Bubbles under this one, it no longer points north. All of these, every liquid filled compass that I've ever had with the exception of this one has failed. And this one is from 2003. If you saw my previous video, there's actually a date code on the bottom of this flashlight. So this is a 10 year old compass. It still worked for me and probably because it's, it's not gotten jostled around as much as the others. But all of these other ones have developed a bubble these were cheap made in China compasses that I've had for maybe five, six, seven years. And this is, was a nice one that I got um, years ago and it has a bubble too. All of these compasses have gotten bubbles. Now, this is an original compass that I had when I was a kid out of a Coglins two-in-one keychain. It was a thermometer and a keychain and it has held up because it is non-liquid filled. Hear that? It's a jeweled bezel point or a jeweled pivot point and it has no liquid inside of it. These I find hold up. The only disadvantage is that they move around more. See how it rattles more rather, rather than being dampened by a liquid. So the question is, what do you look for in a button compass? Well, I look for a couple things. One, where is it made? Pretty much every button compass you buy is gonna be made in China these days. You can get these for real cheap online. I got a set of five of these keychain compasses for a dollar shipped to my door from China. And they actually are okay. They do point north. You can see as referenced by here, they are pointing north. There are some of them you have to just sort of fiddle with a little bit, but as long as they stay flat, they do point north. Here's another one. And uh, one of these, this one is just one of these popped out. They pop out real easily. So I got five of those. And then this one is out of an adventure medical kit survival kit. This is out of one of their first aid kits. This is supposedly, I'm sure, uh, you know, it's supposedly it's an Adventure Medical Kits product, but I bet it's probably made by the same guys that make the Chinese button compasses. But it points north. Um, if you s spin it around, it goes. And this is the one I carry in my pocket survival tin. This one is a, a real new one for me. This guy I got with a paracord bracelet, and it has a bezel to it. It is a 15 millimeter compass. All these others are 20 millimeter compasses. These are all 20 millimeter button compasses. These all are garbage. They, they won't work anymore. Throw them away. Uh, the only reason I keep this one is because it goes with my survival whistle, which I keep as a collector's item. Again, does not work. This one, 20 millimeter button compass, doesn't work. So, this new one, this is a clip-on watch band compass. And what it is, is it has a little arrow here and it has a bezel that you can rotate just like a standard Silva, Brunton, uh, Kamenga, any of the, the regular compasses that you would buy that have a rotating bezel. Or I guess Kamenga only makes the military ones. Uh, Sunto makes uh, great base plate compasses. I have a beautiful Silva 
uh, Model 7 uh, non-liquid filled base plate compass but this is what I use for basic um, navigation on my watch. The problem with a button compass is that it only gives you the cardinal directions north, south, east, and west. Well, north, west, east, west, uh, and northeast, all that. But with this, you can actually find a bearing and hold it by taking this and you rotate the north until it lines up with north and it allows you to stay on a straight bearing path. Because as you move around, you can see that this no longer lines up with this. Trust me, I have tried to navigate in the field with button compasses and they don't work very well. Can you do it? Yes. But it is a lot better if you have a bearing to hold on. Something that I've noticed though is that this compass out of the box is about five degrees off of true north, true magnetic north. So whenever you buy a compass, you need to have another compass with you to make sure that it's accurate. And if it's not, return it or do whatever you need to. Five degrees, I'm not going to get bent out of shape for, for just an emergency navigation tool. But for a quality compass like this, an engineer style lens at a compass, you bet it's a big deal. So what would I say would be a good compass to buy? If you want a compass like this, Sunto makes one called the Clipper. And I really like it. They're about 30 bucks. But for, you can get these for about 2 to $3 off eBay. And they're, they're good enough for uh, basic navigation. I recommend that if you're going to put a button compass in your survival kit and you can afford the room, that you put one with a bezel rather than just a standard button compass. Another thing that I recommend for compasses is that you always carry two. And for me in my pocket survival tin, I have this Adventure Medical, or this one, this is the Adventure Medical Kit's compass, and I have this Coglin's compass. A lot of times in survival situations, you hear about people who stopped trusting their compass. They got disoriented on the trail, and they no longer trusted their compass. They thought that the compass was wrong. You hear about it in, uh, in air aircraft too, uh, like Flight 19 over the Bermuda Triangle, that the compasses failed and this, that, and the other, and that they weren't sure of their bearings. If you carry two compasses, you can make sure that they line up with each other, and it's a great psychological boost. Because then you can say, oh, look at that, they're both pointing north. That's the way to go. That's why I always carry two. And I also carry a third one on my key ring. But I never, ever go out in the woods without at least two compasses on my person. So that's just a little thing about button compasses. Um, there's some great auctions on eBay where you can get 24 button compasses, just plain button compasses for $5 shipped. If you're looking to build some pocket survival kit kits, that's the way to do it. But if you want a really quality compass that you can really navigate with well, uh, get one with a bezel. Because these are good for orienting your map, but not much else. Uh, the SAS and the other guys who teach the land navigation courses and the evasion exercises where you just have a button compass, you'd be at a much greater advantage if you had one with a bezel on it that allows you to take and hold a bearing. Uh, if, you, if you wanted to, you could strip this down. You could cut the clip off and just have it small uh, as a ha uh, handheld one. They also make this in a zipper pull model. But I recommend you have one with an adjustable bezel that you can use to help you navigate. So guys, that's my quick little thing about button compasses. If you have any questions about them, let me know. And also, if you have a button compass like this that does not work anymore, something that you can do is you can crack the case open and suspend it on a needle, on a sewing needle, and it will usually still work. Uh, even though the liquid has failed, usually the, the compass part is intact. If it's rusted away, it's no good. But uh, I have found that in the field, when I've had these that have failed, I've cracked them open and suspended them on a sewing needle and had them work just fine. So that's just a quick tip for you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Take care and stay safe.